Greetings programs, welcome back to Arc New Reviews. So, while I was getting ready to shoot this video, I was running some double checks on the TF Wiki, and I'm very glad I did. Because I was just about ready to make my video all excited talking about the Universe Viper figure. I'm sure plenty of you are screaming already that, what are you talking about? There was no Universe uh, Viper figure. Uh, no, that's because I'm an idiot. And I'm actually getting ready to talk about Universe Stormcloud, uh, Viper's partner from the Micromasters line. Um, which, right, out, right off the bat here, we'll point out, yes, Micromaster 88, that's when, you know, the original version of this character came out. Nice little reference there. Uh, I do want to say thanks to my buddy Tim for helping me get a hold of this figure. I Obviously, as most of you will guess, seeing a Transformer that is an A-10 Warthog... I don't care about this Thunderbolt garbage. They're warthogs. Shut up. They fly through the air and they go, and it's awesome. <laughs> Literally, look up a video about the A-10. Their gun, their huge gun, which is the whole point that the plane exists. It goes, and it's fantastic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is very clearly a remold, repaint. Let's face it, it's not a remold. It's purely a repaint of the universe power glide figure. I do have that figure. Um, it's, it's cooler to go ahead and look at the Decepticon version in neater colors. Um, lot to go over here. This figure was, he was really great in my opinion. I love this mold as a whole. I love it even more in black and purple. Um, lights and sounds. We're going to get those out of the way right now. A little very obvious button right here. Three sounds, one of them you can hold it, you'll notice because I will hold the button down when it makes that sound. So, first sound. Is the wrong sounding gun for an A-10, but oh well, it's... If I remember right, this has the same sound chip as the Universe Silverbolt, so we got a little bit uh, cheated out there, but... So that's the gun. You hold it while it's making that one. It'll keep making that one until the batteries run out or you let go. Um, obviously, the cockpit and the engines flash while you do that. Next one. I have no idea. I think that's supposed to be some kind of power-up or a flyby or something. I don't know. Last sound. A much more obvious, you know, whooshy sound. Um, <laughs> overall, yeah, this is... This is a really neat jet mode. I'm very impressed with how relatively clean it is. Yeah, there's a little bit of, you know, underwing kibble here and there, but I mean, given, like, the, the A-10 is already a pretty lumpy plane, so this isn't too far off, actually. Uh, landing gear does all have little actual rolling wheels. It's a little floppy here because it is just actually attached by a pin. Um, all the landing gears do, obviously, fold up. This one's a little loose on mine, so you'll see and probably hear this one flop around a little bit. But uh, it, it because it's a pinned connection, I'm not sure how to get in there and tighten it. I'll figure something out. Just haven't had time. Um, here, you've got his gun, which does attach via a classic 5mm port. It's a little funny how it's offset like this. You know, I, I know that's kind of what they needed to do, especially when you see how this transforms, but it's just weird to have a gun offset like that and not just, you know, back on the wings or, you know, somewhere up here. Uh, the gun is actually molded to be the more or less proper A-10 gun on the backside, actually. So after you fire the most generic-looking missile in the world, which does fire... Pretty powerfully, actually. You can then go ahead and plug it in backwards and do that. It's it's worth doing. I, I like that a lot. But that's really all there is to go over the jet mode. It's got cool colors. It makes sounds. It's shockingly unkibbly, though they are cheating by using a plane that is uh, naturally kind of lumpy and kibbly. So, hey, it works. So, transformation on this guy is actually pretty different for a jet former. It's one of the reasons I like this mold. So, we're going to go ahead and start by flipping down this little panel right here, which will let us flip the tail up ever so slightly. 
Um, before I forget to mention, because this is a Power Glide figure, there is actually a little heart here under that's uh, going to be covered up by this panel when we fold it back down. But yes, he's he's got the heart. It, this is a Power Glide toy, technically. <laughs> Come up here, unpeg these two tabs from the back sides of the legs here, and extend the legs down. Then this little tab here is going to come up and peg in, and it's also going to hit a button while we do that will do the most important thing possible with a Transformers toy. Go ahead and fold the tail up a little bit more just to get it out of the way. But when this plug, this goes ahead and plugs in, it does the thing. It's always, always fun when a figure does the thing. Go ahead, take this piece, fold it up. It will lock into place, keeping him from continuing to do the thing and make the sound. Go ahead and rotate these little struts up just to get them out of the way. Give us maximum clearance to spin the ratcheted waist around, split the legs, turn them forward, and fold out the feet. Come to, let's see here, what's the next best thing to do? I mean, go ahead and fold this down. It doesn't peg in or anything, but generally speaking, this hinge st seems to stay like really tight over time. So when you put it down there, it it, it, it's, it stays there. So go ahead and fold up his head from inside the tail, turn it around. And if you look in here, you will see there are two little uh, indents right there. Um, if I can find them here. Like right here are little, not even full tabs, just like little bumps sticking out. These will come back and lock in. And I'm probably going to push the button while that happens. I will try not to. But, okay, there we go. Um, go ahead. Ah, we did it again. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and... Keep setting off the sounds by accident. But uh, no, go ahead and fold up the tail so that it comes down and you know just gets out of the way as best it can. Obviously, if you want, you can bring it up as well if you want him to look a little more Decepticon intimidating or whatever, but I like bringing it down. You will notice that he is now all only making the, uh, the gun sound, by the way. Uh, they were smart when they designed this. Once this comes up and clicks in, makes the transforming sound, it disables the other sounds, so this button becomes just the gun. And this little piece here remains on its own hinge, so you can use it to push the button. Um, it, just because every once in a while I get questions about this, uh, this guy's um, battery compartments are on the undersides of these little sections. Each one of these has a AAA battery in it, so you just hit that screw, this little panel on the underside pops down, battery goes in there. But anyway, go ahead and rotate this panel up, flip this, flip the wing up on that hinge. You'll see there's a little slot right there, the tab right there on the side of the engine, slot on the top of the wing. Go ahead and just get that lined up and... When you have everything in the right spot, you'll be able to... Hmm. One second, let me just do it on this side first. You, you remember, there are there is a rotation here, as well as here. So it can take a second to get both hinges in spot, in position, so that things line up to actually... Oh, and he, he detransforms when you do that, too, by the way. Didn't mean to set that off yet. Setting him off a lot by accident here. Um, that is one thing about this figure. While you're messing with it, you will be hitting buttons constantly. Uh, this is also, by the way, like one of those two-position ratchets. So, if you're having the trouble that I am right now, just go ahead and make sure you've actually got that turned far enough. I'm having to like switch between looking at the viewfinder and at the figure in real life. So I apologize if things aren't 
in frame correctly here. Uh, yeah, I hadn't brought this far enough forward, which means then you bring this back. And once that lines up, it'll peg on. Um, this side on mine doesn't peg in super, super tightly, um, so it, it'll probably come loose here and there if you watch. Uh, just look at this one. If it does, this one holds really well. But um, while you're transforming, you will have uh, taken this slot off of this tab. So go ahead and just bring the arm down, then push down on the landing gear to pop out his hands. Just a tiny bit trickier to do than you would expect, but... And there you go. There you have Evil Power Glide, a.k.a. Storm Cloud, in his robot mode. And yes, his proportions are a little weird, but that's kind of par for the course of uh, Power Glide figures a lot of the times, I find. As well as... There's so much about this guy that is pretty... It's a combination of ahead of its time, as well as just really, really freaking cool. Um, right off the bat, if you didn't notice while I was accidentally hitting his button on the back all the time... While you're doing the lights and sounds, his eyes actually flash. Even though this is an articulated head, you've even got up and down there. It's hard to move his head up without pushing the second panel down <laughs> to uh, <laughs> set the sounds off. But So you get up and down on the head. Not much down, but you, know, you can fold it quite a ways up if you keep the head straight. Since you're just folding it back into the little transformation cavity there. Um, the arms are on a... like I, I think that's technically a hard ratchet. It's just a quiet one. Um, it is just a normal hinge for the outward movement as well as for the elbow gets you 90 degrees um, nothing at the wrists I, they could have put a hinge in there but at the same time that probably would have led to a weak point there for you know you shove the hand in there while this isn't you know in the right spot you end up breaking a mushroom peg or something they could have done it but I can kind of see why they might have chose not to do it does have a Ratcheted waist. It's a very tight ratchet on mine, so that's always nice. Ratcheted legs forward. Legs go back if you bring them out one click, or even like half a click. Um, the only kind of issue, and it's a very common issue with uh, figures of this era, the ratchets are fun, but the like the detents on the ratchet are a. There's a lot of play in them, but b to get them to actually go to the next position. Like it's a drastic move. There, there, there should have been one here between, <laughs> like that. But you do have a ratcheted outward for the full splits rotation right there under the thigh. Um, funny enough, even though you pull his legs out for transformation to get just a little bit more knee articulation, there is like this extra click you can get right there. It won't stay, but you can click it out. And then take the ratcheted knee all the way to 90 degrees. As well as, you know, forward and back foot articulation, as you'd expect from the transformation. But the really neat touch, there's actually an ankle tilt there. Like, so the foot's already kind of molded at a bit of an angle, but then you get the extra from the rotation there. And it's really neat. Now, to have him with both feet solidly on the ground, you do have to go... Completely straight with the ratchets and then like kind of pull them out slightly for the, you know, using the play in that ratchet joint. Not ideal, but I mean, it works. This guy is very easy to stand despite his top heaviness, which I'm not going to complain about. Like the feet aren't overly large, but they're big enough to do their job very well. Obviously, you can go ahead and give him his gun back. I prefer to just leave the missile out and give him the A-10 Gatling gun. Let him do his thing. Um, 
yeah, this this guy is he's really cool and he's really fun. My camera is wanting to be a little harsh here. I'll see if I can nope, too far, too far. There is no good way of doing this while I'm live. But yeah, this is this is a really neat figure. It's a really great mold. Um I know of at least two versions of Power Glide. They did one that's mostly gray, actually, and then has, like, some red accents on it. And then there's one that's just the traditional, you know, gray, uh, pardon me, red Power Glide overall. Um, really, really neat stuff. I, I did forget to mention, by the way, he's got little, little knee pads here that will, you know, move around and do whatever you want him to. Especially this being the Decepticon mold, I want him to pop out and stand out and... Make him all spiky. But yeah, this is... This mold is one of the reasons, like... The deluxes and stuff from the Universe line... You know, I, I know that a lot of people really like them. If I remember right, there's a couple of them I think are kind of neat. But... Uh, the real cash money from that line, in my opinion... It was the Voyagers and Leaders. They had sounds and lights. They had... Uh, some of them, like, this guy had really, really fantastic articulation. I, I love this guy. If you can get any version of this mold, I do very much recommend it. Um, obviously, I would consider this version the coolest. Power Glide is also still a great character. Just... This is this 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 whole this mold is a very big recommendation just in general. So, all that said, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I will see you next time.